Hey y'all, it's Jennifer. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, we are in a different angle today because I am finally doing a video that is always highly requested, uh, which is basically how I annotate. Uh, so today I thought I would take you through some of the books that I have annotated and kind of show you my process. The key thing with me is that there is no process. Uh, essentially for me with annotation, anything goes. I know a lot of booktubers have a very set annotation system and essentially what they do for one book, they do for all others that they decide to annotate. That's not true for me. I've done a lot of experimenting in recent years and annotation was really not something I did prior to booktube. Uh, so through booktube, I discovered the joys of tabbing uh, and the joys of underlining. So I thought I would take you through some of the things I have annotated and actually a bit through my history of annotation, how I started annotating and how that has changed, how that has developed over my time on booktube. Now, annotation is a very personal thing. And some people absolutely hate the thought of writing in their books. Uh, and it took me a long time to get over that as well. So I completely understand that. That's totally valid. But now I will write in all of my books. Uh, so that is not something that holds me back anymore. But I am still a little bit squeamish about actually writing comments on the page. Uh, that is something that I still struggle with, but I will take a pen to paper at any moment in time. The first thing I will do is show you a really typical example of annotation for me. So this is Moby Dick. You can see that I tabbed a little bit here. And essentially for the most part towards the back of the book, I have just tabbed, but I have not underlined anything. The reason that that happened in this case is that I actually was reading Moby Dick on the beach. And so I didn't always have a pen with me, but I did have my tabs, which I often use as a bookmark. So in this situation, I basically just tabbed and I actually also tended to update Goodreads or mark on my phone kind of the page I was on and the passage that I wanted to come back to. But apparently, as you can see, I never came back and underlined the passages that I really wanted to. So that's something that I should do. But when I first started reading Moby Dick, I was inside and I did have access to a pen. And so apparently I thought this entire section was important, so I bracketed it. But I also underlined the lines that I really liked, that I thought were probably the most important part of that passage. And so this is a very common way for me to annotate. And this is essentially the system that I have. I will underline lines that I think are really beautiful, and that's essentially all I underline. I'm not really into paying attention to character development uh, or anything like that, setting, things that are being set up, so foreshadowing. I know a lot of people like to tab and underline and make note of things like that. That's not really something that I've ever really done. Uh, so that's not really why I underline. I typically only underline things that I think are really beautiful. So in truth, my annotation system is very, very simple. Nine times out of 10, what happened here with Moby Dick is what happens here for me with every book that I decide to annotate. And I will say Moby Dick is also a very good example because it is a classic. And I very rarely annotate books that are not classics. When I do it's nonfiction. And there tends to be really no system there, except that I possibly want to make note of information that I think I will need to know, or that I think I will come back to, because nonfiction tends to be a book that I really find myself returning to time and time again to refresh myself on certain knowledge. So I will tab in nonfiction, and I will also underline in nonfiction but it tends to be for facts that I feel like I need to remember. But for the most part, current literature is something that I never annotate. So Moby Dick is a really wonderful example of the type of annotation that I typically do. But before we get into kind of the history of my annotating and different ways that I annotate, I did wanna show you some of my favorite tools for annotation. I recently decided to do an annotation pencil pouch 
I've seen a lot of booktubers do this and it has totally and completely changed my life because I have been able to keep track of everything. So we have tabs in there, uh, which I am currently using these tabs. I got them in about a pack of six or seven, I wanna say, from Amazon. I will link to them down below if I can find them. They were very, very cheap and I love the colors here. I love how muted they are. Something else that I always keep around if I am annotating is post-it notes because like I said, I still really do get squeamish about writing in the margins in some cases. And so when I don't really wanna do that, having a post-it around is a real lifesaver. My favorite pens are these, which are the Frisian pens and they are erasable. They are life-changing. Annotating with an erasable pen is something that will change your life uh, because it will actually make you quite a bit braver. You will not feel as bad about writing in the margins or about underlining because I often feel like a perfectionist when I'm annotating and so if things don't go right, if they're not completely straight, if I didn't write them clearly, I'm very mad because I feel as though I marred the book. But if you were using an erasable pen or a pencil, I started out with a pencil, but I do find that pencil fades very rapidly. So I really love the erasable pens. And just as with the tabs, I will link to those down below. I do have a highlighter in there, as you can see. I'm trying to become a little bit more open to highlighting. Highlighting feels a bit to me at this point, like I'm going back to school because that is the only annotation that I ever did in school or in university. And highlighters feel very, very bold. They feel very permanent. And so that's not really something that I enjoy at this point, but I have tried it. And I am trying to see if I like it with certain books. The first book that I can recall annotating on my channel uh, was one of the first books that I think I ever read on my channel. I read this very early on. And that is The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas. This is one of my favorite books of all time. And I fell in love with it right off the bat. So I knew I wanted this to be a very special reading experience. And I also thought that it was going to be a book that would take me a long time to read, which was very true. I took months to read this. So I did start out trying to tab instances of foreshadowing, trying to tab instances of kind of character work. So I did start out doing that, sadly enough. But in the end, I have no earthly idea what that means. The tab colors here mean absolutely nothing. And so I really, nine times out of 10, I'm not sure why I tabbed what I tabbed in this instance because I was too, not fearful, but I was apprehensive of underlining when I first started annotating. Tabs was about what I was willing to do. In some instances, it's very clear to me that I was tabbing quotes that I thought were important or quotes that I thought were really beautiful. And this is something that I try not to do now, but I did at the time because I really did not want to underline. But I just put the tab precisely at the point on the page that I wanted to mark. So the tab really is on the quote that I wanted to make reference to. Uh, so that is unusual for me now. Now I really want my tabs to be a little bit more organized. I think you can see it really well right there. Three right in a row. And that is something that visually I don't like now and so I try to avoid. I think there's a lot about annotation that is just style. Uh, and there is something to it that I really like from a style perspective. So I really want my tabs to look semi-organized. But this is the first instance of annotation that I can remember. This is the first book that I annotated outside of school. Now here's an example of a book where I actually have written quite a bit in the margins. And so this is The History of the Church by Eusebius. This is a classic from the 300s, I believe. So this is a Roman classic. And he is making a lot of references to other works. And he's talking quite a bit about the birth of the Christian church. He is really one of the first historians. Uh, so he is trying to chronicle the birth of the Christian church. And so there was quite a bit in here that I really wanted to make note of and that I really wanted to make my own observations about and see whether or not this thing actually originated with Eusebius whether it originated in the Bible, whether it comes after Eusebius. 
So I think you can see that this is a book that I really, really marked up. There is some underlining here, of course, but I am actually, for the most part, writing in the margins in this book. This is a book that I really just wrote all over, and I'm not sure why this book really got me, really had me annotating, but it did. And so this is one of the few instances I have in my library where I actually wrote observations in the margins of the book. Now, I do this quite a bit in poetry, but I don't do it very often with prose. So that segues me into poetry quite nicely, so I thought I would let you look at Keats uh, because I have really updated how I annotate poetry in recent months. When I started out with poetry, I just went wild. I thought that I needed to tab everything. I thought everything needed, you know, post-its on the page because I was still very wary of writing in the margins. But eventually, I just gave in and I decided to write on the page with poetry. And I'm very, very glad about it. This is a very good example of what I started out doing with poetry. So I have a post-it note here. And you can see that when I did write on the page, I wrote in pencil. But I don't really find that very eye-catching. Often when I annotate, and why I annotate is so that my eye is caught when I come back to the book. And pencil does not really catch my attention in the same way that pen does. I've also largely moved away from tabbing poetry mostly because I'm often reading poetry collections or a collection of a certain poet's poetry. And I really was tabbing basically to make note of a poem that I particularly liked. Well, if you like the poet, there are going to be quite a few poems in the collection that you tend to really like, in my experience. And so to me, tabbing has kind of fallen by the wayside because I was either doing too much of it, I was tabbing every poem, I was tabbing every quote, or I wasn't doing enough of it to warrant tabbing, such as in this case, because I've read quite a bit of Keats, but I have not really tabbed everything. But here is what I do now. This is Ode on a Grecian Urn by John Keats, which is one of my favorite poems of his. And this is actually how I annotate poetry now. This is my standard annotation style. I would say this is set in stone. For the most part, annotating prose comes and goes for me. Sometimes I just underline. Sometimes I just tab. Sometimes I underline and tab. But poetry for me now is set in stone. Uh, so I'll tell you what I do here. Uh, I date the poem when I read it. Uh, this is because I often reread poetry and it's very interesting to see how it strikes you at a different age or at a different time. Or you can see too how often you have reread it. So I date the poem. I also write the date that the poem was written or published and I also write the meter. This is very important to me because some poets, such as John Keats, write in different meters for different poems. It's very nice to know the meter that they were writing in or if they were writing in blank verse. I also really love circling things. So often I am circling words that have fallen out of fashion in the modern day. So these are words that are a little bit archaic to us that I still need a definition for, or they are references to things. So they are biblical references, they are references to certain mythologies. It can also be references to their contemporaries. So maybe to another poet, uh, in the case of Keats, maybe this is a reference to Shelley. Uh, so this is something that I like to do because, again, it's something that I find very eye-catching. Uh, so when I look back at the poem, I understand exactly what I observed about it and what caught my eye the first time I read it. I also typically will write a personal observation of the poem around it if it is a poem that particularly strikes me. Uh, so in this case, it did. So my observation here is a little bit more um, what the poem is, what the poem is about, what it is trying to say, what its meaning is to me kind of how I have observed it. Maybe this is not necessarily what Keats intended, but this is how I read it. This is my observation of the poem. Uh, and in some cases, I will write down the poet's intention with the poem on the page as well. Uh, so this is something that I just really love doing. I love annotating poetry. Now, not every poem do you walk away with a ton of observations. Not every poem has a ton of quotes that you want to underline. But this one really struck me. So this was a very good example, I think, of my annotation style for poetry.
Last but not least, I want to show you something that was kind of experimental for me, which is the Pickwick Papers by Charles Dickens. This is the one and only time I have used a true annotation system where the tabs meant emotions. Now, I use tabs here to mean emotions that occurred in the book, not emotions that occurred in me as the reader. So some of these tabs mean things that are sad. I marked sad things happening in the book. Some of these things are imagery, which I really liked. And imagery is now something that I really look out for when I am annotating prose or poetry. Uh, it's something that I find I really enjoy making note of. So that is something that I kind of added into my annotation system a bit. But this I read for the Dickens versus Tolstoy book club hosted by Emma from the channel Emmy and Carolyn Marie Reads. They had an annotation system. And so I decided to follow along with their tabs. So I wrote on a post-it note all of the tab colors and what their meanings were going to be. And I decided to commit to annotating this book in that style. And I will say it is something that I really enjoyed doing. And I think it really added to my enjoyment of the book. There's not a ton of underlining in here. I essentially just used the tabs and I really didn't underline. I really didn't write anything in the margins in this case, but I do think it was largely successful because as the months have gone on, the Pickwick Papers has stayed pretty firmly in the front of my mind. It's something that I vividly remember reading. I remember the process of it. And I think that's largely down to the fact that I annotated it. Maybe that's not true, maybe it was just a really excellent book, but I do think that using an annotation system has made me remember specific instances in the book a little bit more than I would have otherwise. So I see why that is something that certain readers do, and I also see why they tend to take one system and use it for every book they read. But I am not there yet. This is currently where I am at and I am basically still experimenting. For the most part, what I showed you with Moby Dick is what happens for me with prose. And what I showed you with John Keats is what happens for me with poetry. Uh, so that is my annotation system. Those are the things that I typically use when annotating. Uh, when I decide to annotate a book, it's very odd. Sometimes I can tell right off the bat I need to annotate a book and it is something that I do going through on a first read. I know a lot of people will wait till they've reached the end of the book to come back in and tab, but I tend to do it as I go along and I always have. But I would love to know down below if you have an annotation system. Do you annotate the same way for every book that you read? Do you annotate at all? But that's going to be all for me today. I hope you're all having a great week. Happy reading. Goodbye.